<laughs> Is it normal for airplane wings to wobble? When an aircraft flies at a constant speed and altitude, the forces pushing it up and down are balanced, resulting in no net force. However, entering a region of higher air density, like a cloud, increases lift, pushing the plane upward and causing the wings to bend upward. Exiting into lower density air reduces lift, making the plane descend and the wings bend downward. These rapid shifts in lift force cause the wings to flex, creating the wobbling effect. Hmm. How do eagles fly so high? Eagles are masterful high flyers, thanks to a combination of physical adaptations and clever use of their environment. Firstly, eagles have large, broad wings with strong muscles that allow them to generate enough lift to reach high altitudes. Secondly, eagles take advantage of thermals, which are upward currents of warm air. They circle in these thermals to gain altitude with minimal effort and then glide to their next destination. This is how eagles fly so high. Hmm. Why are helicopters so noisy? When the main rotor of a helicopter starts rotating, the blades start spinning. Due to this spinning, air pressure above the blades starts dropping, while air pressure below the blade starts increasing. Now, air from high pressure area starts moving to low pressure area. This produces a lift, which causes the helicopter to rise. At the same time, a vortex is generated by the tip of a rotor blade. When this vortex hits the next advancing blade, the blade vibrates. The vibrations of the blade generate a loud sound. Hmm. Why are there so many pigeons? Pigeons, as we know today, are said to have descended from a wild creature known as the rock dove. It is believed that about 10,000 years ago, people began domesticating as well as breeding rock doves primarily for food. Over time, people realized that pigeons had excellent navigational skills. Pigeons started being used to guide lost ships towards land as well as to carry messages over long distances. Eventually, instead of looking at pigeons as a food source, people started breeding them as a hobby. Hmm. Why do humans have five fingers? A theory suggests that we have five fingers because together they make a perfect strong grip. Using them, we can operate small objects with great control and precision. Second theory suggests that three molecules called BMP, WNT and SOX9 are responsible for our five fingers. Since in our embryonic stage they mark out spaces specifically for these five fingers. Finally, Lim Law predicts that the number of fingers on our hand should be around five based on the idea that since fingers must be able to reach back over our palm and cover it, the finger length should be roughly the same as the diameter of our palm. Hmm. Huh? Are treadmills bad for us? Firstly, on a treadmill, instead of our leg muscles, the propulsion belt propels our body forward. Hence, it limits our muscle development. Secondly, as compared to treadmills, nature provides us uneven surfaces and turns, thus allowing our leg muscles to learn and adapt. Thirdly, most treadmills don't have a downward incline feature. Hence, the runners don't get the benefit of jogging downhills. Lastly, Aww. running on treadmills can be extremely boring as compared to running outdoors. Hmm. How will we sound on Mars? Firstly, because of the cold Martian atmosphere, sound travels at a lower speed on Mars as compared to that on Earth. Hmm. Secondly, as the Martian atmosphere is extremely sparse, it affects the way sound waves travel from one point to the other. Hence, the volume of sound heard on Mars is automatically lower. Hmm. Lastly, the Martian atmosphere is made up of around 96% carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide absorbs a lot of higher-pitched sounds. As a result, only lower-pitched sounds can travel long distances on Mars. Hmm. 
What exactly is blood rain? Firstly, around Sahara Desert, brownish dust and sand carried away by storms mixes with water droplets in the clouds, thus giving the rain its brownish red color. Secondly, in Kerala, red spores of Trentipolelia annulata algae get carried away by winds and mix with the falling water droplets, thus causing blood rain. Hmm. Lastly, in Zamora, Hematococcus pluvialis algae actually get caught in the rain clouds. As a result, they get stressed and produce a red pigment called astaxanthin, thus causing blood rain. Hmm. How does a jellyfish sting? No big deal. Even Am Sum can sting. Oh, Am Sum. Jellyfish's tentacles contain thousands of venom containing stinging cells called conidocytes. Conidocytes are basically small compartments which house many needle like stingers. The stinger lies coiled under high osmotic pressure. Now, when there is a trigger due to an external force, the lid of the stinging cell pops open and seawater rushes in. This forces the mini needle like stinger to shoot out, penetrate, and finally inject venom into the victim. This discharge can occur in less than one millionth of a second. This is how a jellyfish stings. Hmm. How can huh? parrots talk? Are you kidding me? Parrots can't talk. Huh? Oh, I'm um, some. According to a research, parrots' brains have an additional structure called shells, or outer rings which surround those areas which control vocal learning. These shells are believed to help parrots to be really good at copying sounds, thus giving them the ability to talk like humans. Hmm. In addition to this, parrots are highly sociable animals. As they crave interaction as well as attention, they start mimicking us to become a part of our flock. Hmm. What happens to old satellites? Simple. They become Amsum's toys. Huh? Oh, Amsum. There are a couple of options. It all depends upon how high the satellite is. For the satellites which are closer to Earth, scientists huh? may use the last bit of remaining fuel to slow the satellite down. <laughs> this way the satellite will fall out of orbit and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Huh? For the satellites, which are much higher, it will take a lot of fuel to slow them down enough to fall back into the Earth's atmosphere. Hence, for these satellites, it takes a lot less fuel to simply blast them further into space to die. Hmm. What are boogers? I know, I know, they are my friends. Oh, um, some. In order to understand boogers, we need to first learn about mucus. Mucus is huh? the slimy, sticky substance which is produced by tissues in our nose, mouth, sinuses, throat, as well as our digestive tract. Hmm. Mucus helps catch harmful viruses, dirt, germs, and pollen, and thus protects our lungs. Hmm. Tiny hairs inside our nose called cilia move the mucus along with the trapped stuff towards the front of our nose. Now when we sneeze or blow our nose, the mucus comes out. If some mucus along with the debris remains in the nose, then it starts to dry out and clumps together and finally becomes a booger. Hmm. 